And a guy the other day said, hey, Ted, I really like your political views. And I went, views? What do you think the Constitution is a view? What, <laughs> what, Bill, of, Bill of Rights like a hunch that I have? Let me ask you this. You know, there seems to be a huge difference. I've noticed this. There are people like you and the Alice Coopers of the world and even uh, even Rob Zombie, like the hard rockers, or even as you go toward the shock rockers, tend to be more working class conservative as opposed to kind of the elitists. I, I don't even know if you put it in a rock, but the people like the Coldplay, you 2 There seems to be a divide, and I think people are often surprised that Ted Nugent is Ted Nugent, or Alice Cooper is Alice Cooper. Because, I mean, it's Alice Cooper, right? Who'd have thought he'd become a Christian conservative? There's a trend with that. Do, 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 you, do you think there's a specific reason for that trend in, in, in hard rock? Because it's always fascinated me. Well, it, it should fascinate you because the media would indicate otherwise, 180 degrees otherwise. Right. Tell you, and again, I'm 68 and a half years old, getting ready for the greatest tour of my life with the most outrageous flame-throwing musicians that guitar player can ever <laughs> Playing, playing the greatest love songs in the history of the world. What would your life like, be like without Wango Tango, for example? I don't know. Uh, um, so, I might not have a life. Wango Tango could be responsible for my birth. <laughs> well, Stephen, you remember, remember the baby boom? Yeah, uh, I that, was boomed. That was me. Anyhow, <laughs> my point being is that it doesn't come to a surprise to me whatsoever. Going back with my band, The Lures, we won the Battle of the Bands in Detroit in 1963. We opened up for the gods of thunder, the Motown Funk Brothers and and, uh, and uh, the, the uh, Stevie Wonder and uh, uh, Diana Ross and the Supremes. And I opened up for Mitch Ryder, the Detroit Wheels and Gene Pitney and Martha and the Vandellas. That's why I'm like this, Stephen, because I am so appreciative of the blessings that I have been exposed to and, and I've been able to cultivate with my fellow working hard, playing hard musicians. And let me tell you, the term working hard, playing hard really, really describes successful musicians. Sure. Work ethic we must focus and retain is it would scare more most people. I will go out this summer and I will play 60 some concerts and I play six nights a week. And yeah. it's ferocious high energy. At my age, I should just blow up before the second spot. <laughs> yeah. I think Iggy Pop so did that once. I think he actually did. He was a case study in spontaneous That's combustion. Right. Yeah. Well, I save I saved my blowing up for the encore because I'm a <laughs> big crescendo fan. Yeah. But every one of my songs has eight crescendos. My point is it doesn't surprise me at all. I know these people. Let me in let me in let, let you in for a little secret that probably won't surprise you, but it's it is a shocker the way I look at it. I, I'm not going to name names, but I could name the top artists on the planet who I've worked with, I've communicated with, I've had a little red wine and Werner's ginger ale backstage. <laughs> we've, we've, we've talked about every uh, uh, possible issue that re references quality of life, the musical heritage of the black heroes that inspired all of our great music, Howl of Wolf, Muddy Waters, B.B. King, Freddie King, James Brown, Wilson Pickett, Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, et cetera, et cetera. And let me quote 90% of them, and this is going to piss you off because it pisses me off, and I let them know it pisses me off. Here's what they say, and this goes back to the 1960s. I'm glad you stand up for that stuff, Ted, because I'm not going to. They'll never buy my records again. Right. How's that? Yeah. How's that for a bunch of spineless little sackless wonders? Yeah. That really drives me nuts. That's why the media and, and government and certainly uh, academia has gone so far left because nobody had the balls to stand up and know that if you smoke dope, you're, you're a liability. Who do you want to smoke dope? <laughs> Your pilot, your babysitter. <laughs> How about your your landscaper? Who do you want high in life? And the answer to that is nobody. It cures cancer, you fool. <laughs> Learn the science. Here's though. Here's. <laughs> believe me, I've gotten into arguments about this too. I don't care what people put in their body, but I've I've not seen positive uh, repercussions from people doing it personally. Um, but there is a difference. I, why the discrepancy between a lot of new rockers? I mean, let me give you an example. My mother-in-law. She toured with Aretha Franklin. Joni Mitchell, Grateful Dead. Wow. She was a backup singer 
Um, she left. She's now does like gospel. She's she's just a, an as good as it. And I wouldn't just say this as good as it gets. My mother's an award winning wardrobe stylist. She did the big comedy just for laughs festival, all the French Canadian sitcoms. So I was raised in a family like this. I've been around creative people and artists, even at the highest level. I mean, at this French Canadian show, Le Creator, where my mom would work, for example. One day we'd have Eminem come in when he was at the top. The next day, Moby. You know, but he was at he was he was really popular at some point. There is a there is a disconnect. There is definitely a cat between, like you said, those the, the hard rockers seem to be distinctly conservative as opposed to mainstream rock, the modern alternative rock. And, and I do have, because it's still a hard work. Listen, let's be honest, even if we don't like their music, they still have an incredible work ethic. As Greg Gutfeld says, a lot of these Hollywood liberals, uh, they don't act liberal in their own life. They only get by by an, an incredible work ethic and they believe that they get what they take, but they don't espouse that. Why do you think it is specifically people like hard rockers? Is it just... Is it just the balls factor? Is it the scrotum factor? Do we go back to that? Well, and, and I again, it being slithering throughout the inside all my life. I mean, literally, I started playing my guitar 60 years ago, and I had a band in Detroit. We played Boogie Woogie and Honky Tonk at the Michigan State Fair in 1958. <laughs> so I, I've been around the block. In fact, I built the damn block, blew the block up, and still went around it. And, and <laughs> well, that's, another, that's every block in Detroit now. They're all blown up. <laughs> and, and another fascinating uh, angle that I guess no one has ever admitted to is that it, you can't be a success without busting your ass. Just the schedule on the road, even those those pussies that do t- those and that take two days off. I mean, my God, I don't want you to hurt yourself. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? But anyhow, um, here here's one for you. The insulation factor in the world of celebrity is what killed Jimi Hendrix and Elvis Presley and Janis Joplin and Jim Morrison. I look John Belushi in the eyes. I, I look Keith Moon in the eyes. I look Jimi Hendrix in the eyes when they offered me their drugs and alcohol. And I went, God, it's, you're killing yourself. Bon Scott made fun of me because I wouldn't drink his Jack with him. And I said, Bon, you son of a bitch, this is going to kill you, man. You are there. You have a gift. You have a soul of musical projection and an authority, but you don't need that stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. So the installation... Wait, what did he sound like? James Nelson Riley? You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. That, was, that was Don Lemon. Exactly how they sound. I'm real good at replicating that. My point is, is that the insulation factor, nobody told Elvis, you can't do that. Right. Nobody Oh, Jimmy, you can't do that. I've been trying to, but I they kind of laughed at me because I... I you know, presumed to be this right wing Attila the Hun. Wait, that's not actually presumption. Uh, they, they, they just, for some reason, they were so strangled by the hipster um, embracement of getting stoned and drooling and puking and dying that they just couldn't shake out of it. Yeah. And the celebrity lie will so insulate you, you have your road manager, you have your, your assistant. I have road managers and I have assistants, but I tell them what to do and I listen to them because Bob Quant, Linda Peterson, Doug Banker, my team are my blood brothers. They will tell me when I'm doing something stupid, I'm, at least I'm waiting for them to, and because I've never done anything stupid, so what the hell? Uh, the point is, is that the insulation factor can all of a sudden make you think that well, we need to we need to feed the hungry. When in fact, most of the hungry are buying dope and whiskey. Maybe yeah. they should spend it on nutrition. Hey, if you like this video, subscribe by clicking the button that says subscribe. If you're not aware of it now, there's no way you're learning the internet at this point. I'm not going to help you. But this was clipped from my daily show, available exclusively to lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club members. If you're a student, military, or veteran, enter in that promo code. It's less than $6 a month, and you get daily content. No more clips, plus this hand-etched mug. Oh, I just, when I feel it, I got a chill, like, on the inside.